This right here is the Pine Phone by Pine64. Now this thing is awesome. It, you can easily flash Linux mobile distributions to it, play around, tinker with it, and really have some fun. But when it comes to actually using it every day as a daily driver cell phone, it's really not feasible for the most part, unless if you really want to give up a lot of functionality that you would get with your typical Android or iPhone. And I mean, it's not necessarily because of the software. Uh, since this thing came out in 2019, they've gone through a bunch of different community editions. This one is the Debian one. They eventually settled on Manjaro Plasma as their main distribution for these phones. But over the progression of these being developed, both on a hardware and the community software side, there has been a ton of improvements to actually get a lot of the functionalities that you'd come to expect in a smartphone on this device including as of recently it has better picture messaging support gps is working a lot better and a lot of the other features that you would expect have been working fairly good for some time this original pine phone handles cell phone calls really good uh, it could do standard text messaging with no problem but the main limitation with this is the hardware uh, this is a very good device to develop the linux operating systems to get to that point where on a software side you could actually use this as a daily driver, but what's really holding the Pine Phone back is the hardware. Now, the, the main thing with the hardware that is really a big problem with this is the actual interaction with the software because there's no GPU hardware acceleration. You open something, you have to wait like a second or two for it to even respond. If you open up the web browser, you're gonna be waiting around a little bit to get everything to work right. And I've demonstrated this in videos in the past covering both Manjaro and the Debian branch of the Pine Phone distributions. But this is all going to change hopefully with the announcement of the Pine Phone Pro. This right here is their October update introducing the Pine Phone Pro. If we scroll down here, we have a trailer video. This is a brief highlight of the features that's going to come with the Pine Phone. And within this October update, there have been a lot more announcements. The main thing is the Pine Phone Pro. Now, if we go over here to the actual Pine Phone Pro page, you can see this device is going to run you about $400 which really isn't too bad. This device is about half the cost to the original Pine Phone. So you're paying double the price for at least double the performance. This thing's gonna be featuring a hexa-core processor. So it's gonna have six cores running at 1.5 gigahertz. And it's gonna be shipping with four gigabytes of RAM. So we're getting that extra gigabyte. And it's gonna include 120 gigabytes of internal eMMC flash storage. Now the original Pine Phone, this is actually the model up. So this one has, I believe, three gigabytes of RAM and 32 gigabytes of storage on the phone while the uh, other ones, the lower tier ones, have two gigabytes and 16 gigabytes of storage, if I'm remembering correctly. If we go ahead and scroll down here and actually take a look at this build, it's very familiar to the current Pine phone. If I go ahead and jump over here and scroll down a little bit, we can see some of the actual internals of the phone, including that main chip right here, the board that you could go ahead and switch out. That's one thing that's really nice about these devices is you can actually take them apart and actually remove these components rather easily. And of course, right here we have that privacy switch that will actually allow you to disable certain components of the phone. And this right here is what I'm talking about specifically. And it's no surprise that they decided to keep that in the Pine Phone Pro. It's definitely a community favorite feature. If we scroll down here, we can kind of see the backside of it. It doesn't look like it's gonna have any uh, distribution specific branding, at least this uh, first rendition of the Pine Phone Pro. You saw that this has the uh, Debian one, the main one right now has Manjaro. But according to at least this uh, developer preview edition, this won't have any branding on it. And the Pine Phone Pro is kind of a thick boy. You can see it added a couple millimeters to the actual thickness of the device. When it comes to the actual aesthetics, there's not too much going on. Going back to the actual order page here, this is also going to be shipping with a 13 megapixel camera, so that's very welcome. Right now, the I really hope the camera is a lot better. I don't think I found any like example pictures or anything, but the camera on this current Pine phone is not good. I mean, it, the pictures all have like this like green hue to it. It's, they just aren't good. So I'm really excited to go ahead and try this out. And when I do get one, I'm definitely going to make a video reviewing it, checking out all the features. And the main thing I'm looking forward to, because with the better processor and RAM in this thing, it's going to be nice to actually benchmark this thing versus the original Pine phone. 
and seeing the exact performance boost that we're going to be getting with the new processor. According to them, the performance is going to be on par to your average mid-range uh, Android device, and that's good because like my, uh, my favorite Android phone is the OnePlus 7T. It's not the perfect phone, it is in that category of a mid-range device. And if the Pine phone has the same performance as the OnePlus 7T, it is going to be an absolutely fantastic experience. And it says here too, as far as the performance, that when it is docked, you can hook it up to a computer. Uh, depending on the actual distribution you're using in whatever uh, desktop environment they're shipping with, whether that be Posh, Plasma, whatever, you can plug it into a monitor and use it as a full-fledged Linux operating system. And according to them, you are able to watch 1080p videos, open the in the office suite, do some light photo editing and things like that on this device. It's also going to be interesting to compare it to something like a Raspberry Pi. That's something that's going to be coming up more on this channel soon, is I do have a, a Raspberry Pi on the way, so do make sure you're subscribed and you ring that bell if you're interested in some ARM64 videos. And then of course, up here, if you actually want to get this device right now, pre-orders are open to developers, so if you aren't planning on making any code contributions to this ecosystem, I would hold off on trying to get the thing, but those people who want the Explorer Edition units are gonna receive them in early 2022. And that's probably when I hopefully will have actual videos of this thing in my hand. And then if I scroll down, we have some FAQs. Uh, I'm a PinePhone owner, will I be able to install the uh, PinePhone Pro mainboard? And that's what I was kind of talking about earlier. I can actually take, with all these screws, I could take off this panel and actually take out this main board. Uh, they say no, probably not a good idea. With this, they're going to keep selling the original Pine Phone. Like I said, this is a beautiful device for development and just general tinkering and playing around. I have other videos where I like ran the Minecraft server off of this thing and actually connected to it and was able to kind of play on it. But it could do things like media server. I had a Nextcloud server running on the Pine Phone. It's a Linux device, it's a computer, so you could basically do whatever you want with it. And down here on the side, we have uh, much more specific details on the actual specifications here, including that processor, the RAM, it's gonna be LPDDR4. And of course, there's gonna be that optional spot for a micro SD card, just like with the original one. Right there is where you go ahead and put in your SD card and your SIM card, which uh, for me, I, the only experience I have with this Pine phone when it comes to mobile connectivity is through T-Mobile and generally it works okay. There's some hits or misses with uh, actual text messages getting sent and received, but the calling on this is absolutely fantastic. It looks like that front camera is going to be a five megapixel camera. So eh, when it comes to that, it's going to be USB 3.0 C. It is going to have an audio jack. So just like this Pine phone here, there is actually a audio jack, believe it or not. It's going to be rocking a 3000 milliamp battery. So that's pretty good for the device. That's one thing. The, another complaint that I have with this original Pine phone is this battery kind of sucks. It, uh, like, probably get a couple hours of use out of this thing realistically running uh i've been running manjaro posh for the most part on this thing and it's it's not that great and the actual like percentage remaining calculations usually is not that accurate so it's going to be nice to see how they improved that and then of course we have that 400 hundred dollar price tag so i can't really get much into it because i don't have it in my hand unfortunately i'm really excited to get it and show you guys everything in person but the very last thing i'm going to touch on is who is this not for i'm not even going to read this i'm going to ignore this and it's probably going to line up kind of with what i'm about to say if you are looking for a phone that you could pull out of the box throw a sim card in and use it and be able to get facebook to work good on it if you want to do snapchat basically any android applications uh, you, you shouldn't use this. If you're somebody who, one, is incredibly patient, two, is very involved and loves Linux to a point that you don't mind occasional glitches, bugs, crashes, things like that, you might want to consider getting this thing. And if you're somebody who just needs the basic functionalities of a cell phone, because with at least that, that by the time this thing comes out, all that should be working just fine. You're calling, you're texting, if you need that and you love Linux, get the Pine Phone. It's probably a good buy. If you're just getting into Linux and you're like, eh, I don't know, it's, it's not worth $400. But with that said, 
even if they don't send me one, I'm going to be getting one. So make sure you're subscribed, ring that bell so you do not miss that. With that, I would love to thank our YouTube members and Patreon supporters. We have Mitchell Valentino, Phil Mac, Kyle, Timo, Anthony. It's looking like we have Chris Curtis. So thank you so much for becoming a uh, producer level supporter. That means the world to me. You are awesome. And thank you to all the other Techie and Techie Plus members who support the channel, whether that be on YouTube or Patreon. Uh, with all that said, I do hope you all have a beautiful day. I'm going to be linking to both of the things we took a look at uh, below this video so you could check this out. Uh, earlier today, I was a little late to the punch. Uh, earlier today, there's, there's a whole bunch of people uploaded videos on this thing. So if you want to learn more, there's probably something I missed. So I'll go ahead and link to some of the other videos of other Linux type YouTubers or tech YouTubers making videos on this thing. So with all that said, have a beautiful day and goodbye.